worship you now. We worship you now. We say, Holy, Holy, Holy are you, Lord. The saints and the angels bow. They redeem, worship you now. Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. One more time, let's lift our voice and declare. The saints and the angels bow. The redeemed, worship you now. One more time, lift your hands and declare. The saints and the angels bow. The redeemed worship you now. Holy, holy, holy are you Lord. Wherever you are, can you lift your voice and magnify the name of Jesus? everywhere both online and on ground can you lift your voice and magnify the name of the lord give him the worship that is due him give him the worship that is due him give unto god the glory that is due his name worship him in the beauty of his holiness don't just stand looking at others or looking around. Open your mouth and exalt your maker. Give him the glory. Holy, holy. Holy, holy. Give him praise. Worthy is the Lamb that was slain. Can you honor and magnify his name? Can you bless him in the spirit? Can you bless him in other tongues? Can you exalt him? His presence is in this place. Oh, as we leave the heart. Give you glory, Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Your presence is in this place. There is none like you, Jesus. There is none like you, Jesus. Blessed be your great name in heaven and on earth. 
Here we are standing in the congregation of the saints to adore and to magnify your name, Jesus. There is none like you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. We're going to pray a little bit before we sit down. I want us to lift our voice and thank the Lord for the testimonies that are recorded in this place. You will agree with me that those testimonies that you hear were not just an ordinary day miracle. Those are not miracles you see on a normal day. A mother paralyzed and insane bedridden and then just by a sent word there was no physical contact and she's perfectly fine i want you to learn and cultivate the habit of being appreciative of every good thing that god does that is the only way to see more are you hearing me every time we have miracle service when i go back home sometimes i spend about an hour thanking him for what he has done even when all that has not all that has not been done has not been done are you hearing me whether it is a retreat whether it's a time of prayer i give god good time to thank him because these are not the workings of a man this is the hand of a mighty god in two minutes can you raise your voice and say father we thank you for all the testimonies recorded in our midst you know what the Lord is saying to me as you thank him your testimony is coming today someone as you lift your voice to thank him and appreciate him for all that he's doing for you can you bless his holy name can you bless his great name for the things that he has done for the miracles he has wrought for the battles he has won can you give him praise? So bless the Lord, oh my soul. Oh my soul. We worship his holy name. Open your mouth and thank him. Thank him. Thank him. Never before. Oh my so yeah worship is open your mouth and give him glory give him praise even for the things that he will yet do give him thanks untimely death averted afflictions arrested miracle of favor Miracles of all kinds, miracles of his goodness, give him praise, bless his name. Rahakaparato kase barata araba sataro bahaya, zero bala aprata karabla hatagaza, iriata la ramarahas. Can you thank him? The great I am provides for me. The great I am provides. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Now we are going to raise a prayer for Nigeria. I had it very strong in my heart all through from yesterday till this morning. That will take out at least two, three to five minutes to pray for our dear country. The Bible says that we should, men should pray everywhere lifting up their holy hands. The Bible instructs us also to pray for kings and those in leadership position scripture speaking in second chronicles 7 verse 14 that if my people 
that are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray. The reason is because he doesn't hear the prayer of a sinner. The prayer of a sinner is an abomination to him. It is the prayer of his saints that has the capacity to provoke divine intervention. He says, I will forgive them of their sins and I will heal their land. We need to pray for this country. Just bring it down a little. I don't know if I've said it here, but I think I began to make a statement from last year into this year. I don't know if I've said it in our meetings, that we should pray that the election date is not postponed. I've said it here. Now you'll notice that from this year, I didn't do any prophecy as touching the elections. That's because God is silent. And I understand what that silence means sometimes. Amen. Sometimes when God is silent, when you are praying about an issue, it may be that it is already concluded. Or it may be that God just doesn't want to talk about it and you have to respect his will at that point. You have to learn how to deal with God as a friend and as Lord. There are some things that has been determined by his will and he doesn't need you questioning about it. The Bible says after Abraham had argued for 10 righteous people, God turned and left. Amen. And then some other times is because, you know, um, he wants us to seek him more so that his will can be revealed to us. I know that God is going to do a new thing in this country, but it will not be without the prayers of the saints. If we don't pray, then you will see the very manifestation of God said it and it didn't come to pass. Not because God didn't have the capacity to bring it to pass, but his people on earth that should cooperate with his will to bring it to pass were sleeping instead of praying. Are we together here? If you are here, say amen. amen. So we are going to take our time to pray. Alright? We are going to take our time to pray. I want to pray for somebody with the name Barka. Alright? I heard that name, Barka. We are going to take our time to pray. But listen, I'll come to that. We have to pray that the election date is not postponed. Because you know what that means. There can be dubious manipulations behind the scene. But even if it is postponed, let the will of God be done. That is one. Number two, we have to pray against insecurity and uprisings. If not, something more deadlier than answers will happen. Are you hearing me? Well, I've not spoken for a while, so I'm talking now. If not, something more deadly is when there is peace, there can be election. Are you hearing me? And don't think that you are secured here. The theater command is doing their best. Don't think that you are secured here. Because what the devil wants to do is provoke an uprising from every part of the country. And you and I know that we don't have the security apparatus that is strong enough to keep the 36 states of this nation in peace at one sitting. We don't have it. That's just the truth. So we have to pray. If for nothing, pray for your loved ones that are far in other, in other states and other regions in this nation. And then we have to pray that the will of God will be done consigning not only the presidency, but every position of office as touching the electorate in this country the job is not going to be for the president alone are you hearing me if you have a good president and you have a corrupt governor you will still have corruption if you have a good president a good governor and you have counselors of words that are corrupt forget about it so it's not just about the president it's just that the president, the reason why God was interested was because, you know, that's the, the number one seat in this country. And that's because if we get it right at that level, we'll get it right at the other level. We need to pray. This corruption is like a spirit in Nigeria that needs to go. We need to drive it out in any way possible. Because the leaders you are seeing, they, they are from corrupt people. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? So we have to pray. But particularly that the election date is not postponed. Amen. Are we ready to pray? I want you to hold hands with somebody just to, to we are going to pray. 
I want you in the next two, three minutes, wherever you are, lift your voice and say, Lord, let your will concerning this nation be done. In the name of Jesus Christ. You can do better. Lift your voice. Let your will, 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 let your will be done. Let your will prevail. Let your will prevail. For by the arm of flesh shall no man prevail. Let your will prevail above evil, above corruption. Prevail above the will of man. Your kingdom come, your will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Can you raise a cry of intercession? Let the agenda of hell not prevail. Let the agenda of hell be frustrated. Let the devices of the enemy be prostrated over this nation. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. I want us to pray that there will be peace by all means. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. If he took the chastisement, we are supposed to have peace. So any troubler of this nation, let the hand of God visit them. Let there be peace in the 36 states of the, of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, including the Federal Capital Territory. Peace in our local government, peace in our words, peace in all the states. In the name of Jesus. Lift your voice and pray. We are still agreeing together. Lift your voice and pray. We declare peace, we decree and declare peace in the name of Jesus Christ. We declare peace, we declare peace in our borders, peace in our homes, peace on the streets, peace in the marketplaces, peace in all the local governments. Peace in the 774 local governments. Peace in the 36 states. Shabarata bakariata marakata bakoso. Eka batala rabasya tabarata kabarata. Irata kaposo toro goboso. Leparaza karudia bazana rana. Every blood sucking demon. Every blood sucking spirit that has been projected over the nation Nigeria be arrested now. Be arrested now in the name of Jesus. Be arrested now. Yes, in Jesus. Name we pray. Job chapter 5 verse 12, Isaiah chapter 8 verse 10. Two scriptures and we are going to pray a very, 
violent prayer this this afternoon we are going to agree and insist the power of corruption will not have its say in this election do you agree with me it's either we pray or the cabals will decide it are you hearing what i'm telling you is either the intercessors pray or the cabals will decide it and you know that they understand priesthood the evil men in this country they understand priesthood if we don't pray enough and sacrifice enough they know how to kill rams this period you are hearing of sudden death anyhow aha and i think we have done a lot of teaching on priesthood in this place the bible says while men slept the enemy so tires so you are not the only farmer on your farm so is if you are not planting something someone else will come to plant another thing but we say no in the name of jesus he frustrates the devices of the crafty so that their hands cannot carry out their plans next verse he catches the wise in their own craftiness it's only god that can do this one in their own craftiness up to today some people have not received their pvc and i next say they have printed all the pvcs why where is the card the bible says he alone catches the wise in their own craftiness and the counsel of the cunning comes quickly upon them isaiah 8 verse 10 i think he starts by saying take counsel and it shall come to naught right take counsel together but it shall it will come to nothing speak the word but it will not stand why for god is with us do you believe god is with us now in that consciousness open your mouth and say no to evil consigning this forthcoming election let the power of corruption be arrested every wicked plan of the enemy to sway the electoral process let it be arrested let it be arrested it is your prayer that will make your vote count lift your voice and pray in jesus mighty name we pray father we agree together in the name of jesus that your will for this nation will come to pass we ask that your sovereign hand will be seen in this forthcoming election let the powers of evil be totally annihilated and let your will come to pass in jesus mighty name we pray now lift your hands and say father i'm ready to receive your word tonight i'm ready to receive your spirit i'm ready for my next level i'm ready to encounter your wisdom your power your presence that is already in this place my heart is open lift your hands lift your voice talk to the lord it is raining all over me i can feel it the lottery 
ride on Jesus. Talk to him. We need more rain until we are wet and we are soaked with the latter rain. Light of the world, you step down into the heavens. Open my eyes that I may see. Yes, Lord. Light of the world, you step down into my darkness. And you open my eyes that I may see. So here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Oh, here I am to say that you're my God. All together, all together. Together, all lovely. together, all together, wonderful. All together, wonderful. wonderful. Jesus. Where is Diana? Osha, Diana. Come, I want to pray for you. Your time has come. I mentioned the name Barka. Whether it's a son name or a name, come. If you are that person, I want to pray for your family. This Barka, uh, there's, there's also, um, there's like a James connected to you. There's a James connected to you, but I want to pray for your family. I want to pray for you. Come. Don't, don't worry, you can relax your hand. Okay, I want to pray for you. God said to tell you your time has come. Do you believe it more than them? Yes, sir. Your time has come. Amen. The Lord said He's going to give you a divine visitation. Amen. From the moment this prophecy is coming to you, what's today's date? Of February. Because prophecy has to do with time. From today, 12th of February, one year from now is going to be when? Let's say another 12th of February next year. In this one year, you are going to experience divine visitation. Amen. The favor of God is upon your life in this season. Amen. The scripture says, Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Diana. 
for her time to favor her. I'm helping you. I'm personalizing Amen. your prophecy. Amen. You know, you, you see, you heard the testimony that that guy gave. Yeah. When a prophetic word comes to you, you have to be ready to receive it. It doesn't concern my life. You hear what I'm telling you? Yes, Aha. It's you. And you, you heard what the brother did. Somebody was being prophesied to. And he, 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 he caught the prophecy from another person. Blessed is she that believes. He didn't mention any name there. So it can be prophesied to another person. But if you believe it, there will be a performance. Your amen is sick. Amen. I had to say that because of the way you are responding. God said your time has come. Amen. The favor of God comes upon an individual because of his mercy. It is the mercy of God that occasions seasons of divine favor. Now, Father, in the name of Jesus, we release divine favor by your mercy. And we declare that from now till 12th of February 2024, let this one year be a year of divine visitation. In the name of Jesus Christ. And the Lord said that before your birthday, you are going to dance. Amen. I will not say more than that. Amen. 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 Now those of you that have been here, those of you that are part of the Pneumatic family, you know that God honors every word here. We don't have to boast about it. We don't have to publicize it. God said to me that between before your birthday, Amen. you will dance. I don't Amen. know. I will not say what the meaning of the dance means okay what's your name sir you are barca yes sir. i'll pray for i want to pray for your family because god is about to do something big amen pastor jesse you're welcome good to see you good to see you oh and by the way i just saw a door opening for you no 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 that, that you just leave it we'll discuss later but i saw a door opening for you i have to just say so i don't forget you see one thing with the prophetic is when i receive it from god now it's left for me to remember what god said about the person that's why if you watch a prophetic ministry very well they'll talk to this person and say wait talk to this person they don't complete it the reason is because it will not be up to god for them to remember and if you know how that the voice of God can change a man's life in one day, you will not joke about it. Can I ask you one question before you sit down? What's the meaning of your native name? My name Happiness. Eh? Happiness. Okay, that's your testimony. Amen. That's what the, the Lord said. Ask her what's her native name. Eh, what's the meaning of her native name? <laughs> in the name of Jesus. God is going to give you a season of joy and happiness. Amen. There's a turning around that is happening for you. Amen. And we enforce it to be so. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you. Let me pray for you, sir. There was a lady. Sorry, me, I came to teach. I didn't come to prophesy today. I came to teach. There was a lady I prophesied to last Sunday. And I said that this Sunday you will give a financial testimony. Where is she? Is she here? She didn't come. Where is she? Did it happen? Ah, so why didn't you come and testify? Okay, because you didn't testify. The other thing that God said while I was sitting there, I will not talk. Amen. Did it happen? Are you sure? So you come out and testify. There's a connection to this thing. I sat there and the Lord said, there was a lady you prophesied to. Tell, it happened. And then call her out because there's something else that is about to happen big. Listen. Much of your prayers is for your family. And God is about to step in. Amen. Specifically, is your father alive? Yes, sir. There are three people, your father and your mother, they are alive? Yes, sir. There are three people in your family that God, if God visits them, more than half of your prayer points are over. Amen. Listen, your father, your mother, and your sister. You know who I'm talking about? Yes, sir. 
I'm seeing a lady who is light skinned like you, yes. but fairer. Yes, sir. Like like you. Yes. Taller than you. Yes, sir. Who is that? Joy. Who is she? She's my sister, elder sister. Elder sister. Yes, sir. How's the person? Next time you come out and testify. Thank you, sir. Amen. Amen. Stretch your hands towards this man. Something is about to look at me, sir. <laughs> hey, yeah, 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 yeah. Let me tell you what I saw in the realm of the spirit. I saw a gate, not a door, a gate open. Amen. 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 If I tell you that there's a television under your pillow, if you go home and you don't see any television, somebody stole it. Are you hearing me? With all humility, I just realized that when I speak, God honors it. There are prophets by calling. I'm not that one. I'm not a prophet. There are prophets by intimacy. I just know how to stay with God and I know the sound of his voice. Are you hearing me? Stretch your hands towards him. Father, we decree and declare that the two lift gates of the destinies of this family be open today. Be open today. In the name of Jesus. Amen. You'll not believe what I'm about to tell you, sir. Look at me. God is about to elevate you. Amen. Are you walking? Yes, sir. You are walking. Yes, sir. God is about to change what you do now. Amen. I see a higher position. Amen. But God said I should tell you, and this will probably be a confirmation to something that is hidden in your heart. Your destiny will not end in the shores of Nigeria. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? Yes, sir. I see a time coming not too long from now. God is about to open a door. Amen. And you are going to leave this nation. Amen. It's not everybody that leaves Nigeria that's, that prospers. So. Yes, Aha. Promotion does not come from abroad. It comes from above. Every good and perfect gift comes from who? Above, not from abroad. Are you hearing me? Yes, sir. Father, confirm every word that has been spoken. Amen. Let there be a change of status. Amen. Let your name be glorified. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I want you to say after me, Father, Father I, decree I decree and declare, declare by, the by the authority in the name of Jesus, name of Jesus that this year, this year my status must change my family must be elevated in the name of Jesus can you pray for 30 seconds I'm done with him please pray the anointing of God's presence is in this place God is doing something new in this season God is doing something new, something new. Can you tap into what the Lord is doing in this season and pray? Where's the lady? Where's the lady? hallelujah let it be as you have asked in the name of jesus that lady wearing is this sky blue yes your hands are like this come come god has a word for you i thought you celebrate god the presence of god is strong now listen just so you know that as you stand this place you are not standing in an ordinary environment there is an environment of the spirit in this place you may not feel anything but you are standing on holy ground how else am i doing what i'm doing so don't wait for feelings to respond to the move of the spirit are you hearing me and because you came here today whether or not a word comes to you God is bringing a change of season for you. I said God is bringing a change of season. Ah! Dixon, come. 
Come. I want to talk to you about your sister's husband. Come. Akabarata burokopota yakamaya. My God, this is opening up like pictures. I tell you, you are at this place. You are not standing in an ordinary environment. Whether you are inside, you are outside, or in uh, online, this ground is holy ground. Can you pray in the spirit for two minutes? Something is happening here. Hey! Forever I am changed by your love. Shatarabara. In the presence, something is happening. I tell you, something is happening. You better be open. In the name of Jesus Christ. There's such a mighty atmosphere of the Spirit of God here. Because you are here, just for being here, your life has been altered for the better. I said your life has been changed for the better. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now hold my hand, my dear. Can I pray for you? Father, I pray in the name of... Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. I see the Lord healing somebody in your family. Listen to me. I see the Lord healing somebody in your family. Amen. I'm looking at a man. And I'm seeing... This is your father I'm talking about. Yes, my father. And I see I see the hand of the Lord upon his chest region where his heart is. Amen. And I see God correcting certain things. Amen. Amen. Even with your mother too, I see God doing some healing in her body. Yes, sir. But right now in the name of Jesus, Lord, every closed door Amen. around the finances of this family. Amen. Today we declare a fata be open. Amen. A fata be open. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And the Lord said the areas that are owed are going to be paid. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Father, we thank you for a divine visitation over joy. Thank you, Jesus. Go and tell joy that the series of disappointments are over. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. It is well with you. I would have said more, but we need to teach today. In the name of Jesus Christ. Can I pray for you? Eh? Yes, sir. Yes or no? Yes. Yes. Are you sure? Yes, sir. This is your first time? No, it is my second time. This is your second time. When was your first time? Two weeks back. Two weeks back. Yes, sir. Have you been called out like this to be prayed for before? No. This is your first time yes, sir. being prophesied to in the public. No, sir. Last day when I came the other day, you prophesied here that um, that the spirit of revelation is coming down. No, I mean call you yes, out. No. I mean, this is your first time. Yes, sir. Can you clap for Jesus? <laughs> that one, you caught that one. All right. But God wants to do something. You have to be happy with what I'm about to tell you now. Okay? First of all, God is going to bring an end to confusion in your life. Amen. Especially when it has to do with making decisions. God is going to bring an end to confusion. In fact, God is fixing you mentally. Amen. I don't know, but God is fixing your 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 mind amen. anxiety confusion is gonna go amen does it make sense what i'm saying to you yes sir and then the lord said there's an anointing on your life and it's time for it to be activated amen are you hearing me yes 
hands now hold my hand father i pray from today by the anointing of the holy spirit let every gift that is resident in this lady be activated right now amen be activated right now amen in the name of jesus christ amen in the name of jesus christ amen. And the Lord is going to use you in the place of intercession and prayer. Are you hearing me? Yes, sir. He's going to use you in the place of intercession and prayer. That's where you'll be meeting God. Okay, in the place of intercession. And that's where you'll find rest. In the quietness of seeking Him in His presence. That's where you'll find rest. Because you are going to be a light to many people. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. God said, your sister is married. I know. I don't know what your sister husband your sister's husband does but i see a breakthrough that has been long overdue coming for him Amen. are you hearing me yes sir you didn't believe i was going to call you i saw you as you were wearing that headphone and a light shine, shined on you in heaven from heaven i just saw a light on you and i knew i needed to talk to you what's your sister's husband doing now he works in an organization he works with an organization i see a breakthrough coming all right because God is about to bless his hands. Okay? Yes, sir. Are you hearing me? Yes, sir. And this blessing will kickstart and finish a project that he has had in his heart yes, for the family. Yes, sir. What? You're smiling. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Huh? Yes, sir. I don't know. That's what the Lord is just telling me. As I'm hearing, that's what I'm saying. You get it? So I have to wait to hear to talk all right god said he's about to bless him and it will kick start and finish in a very short time a project that has long been overdue in his hand take that word to him i'm looking in the realm of the spirit and i'm seeing something that should have to do with a building project yes, and then there's going to be a relocation very quick yes, in the name of jesus is he building now yes sir. he's building now aha uh -huh, you are looking at me as if i don't know Because I saw him kneeling down and praying. And I saw the Lord visiting him. And the visitation will be his job. He's about to change jobs. Amen. Are you hearing now? Yes, sir. The Bible says, where there is a casting down, you shall say there is what? Good. So that means that sometimes a blessing comes in the midst of disappointment. I hope you understand what that means. I will not explain more than that. God bless you. Please take your seat in the presence of God. Can you clap and give God a big clap of praise, blessing? Amen. Welcome to Pneumatech, and I trust that the Lord will do you good in Jesus' name. Particularly for our first timers, I want to welcome you, and I want you to know that you have come to the house of God. You have come to the house of bread. The place where the word of God is taught in simplicity, in truth, and in power. I want you to know that you have come into an experience. You have come into an atmosphere. This is the place where we experience the wisdom, the presence, and the power of Jesus Christ. And for me, it's a complete package. It is a complete package. Nothing can assure you of transformation of elevation and of supernatural lifting other than when you encounter the wisdom of god the bible says this wisdom was hidden from all the ages but appointed for our glory it is the wisdom of god through his word that will make you distinguished the very presence of god that transforms and the power of god that is able to make you become the power of god that is able to make you do the power of God that is able to make you excel. The power of God that is able to lift you. That is able to enthrone you. This kind of encounter is a total package. And when you come, I want you not only to have your heart open, but to be participative. Just sitting down dormant will, not, will do no such thing. When you go to a hospital, you have to cooperate with the doctor. In fact, as a matter of fact, I know there are medical professionals here. As a matter of fact, I believe there are some surgeries that they will do and you don't have to be asleep. You have to be awake. 
right dr wycliffe it's true they will tell you to be awake so that you can cough so you have to be part of the process so when you come come with the attitude of joy come with the attitude of receiving knowing that it is your time jesus said to mary he said my time has not come but your time is always now john chapter 2 huh say your time is always now and i think also in john chapter 7 bishop oedipo said every day is god day the god's day the day that you believe is your day god ha he doesn't mind blessing you every day of the week as long as your faith is enough to believe him so you have to be you know you have to be ready you have to participate and ensure that you are part of every service so that your life can move from glory to glory and the lord will do so and even more in jesus name i would have continued but you know that's not my calling my calling is to teach if i prophesy from now to the end of the service i have not fulfilled my calling you will go home happy but i will go and receive flogging at home amen not literally like god will flog me no but you know god can snob sometimes amen it's not only human, human beings that can snob but god can snob that's why the psalmist says cast me not away from your presence and take not the holy spirit from me and now in the new testament we have been brought into his presence the bible says we have come to mount zion but you know you can be in his presence and not make contact with his presence uh -huh. so what will make me fulfill tonight is to share with you from the word of god and open your eyes to see the things that god will have you receive today for some of you today your ministry your giftings and your work with god will transcend into a higher level Amen. you sat on your mouth Amen. in the name of jesus christ Amen. and i want to say this before i continue preaching i think it's time for us to buy a new keyboard Amen. Huh? that note that you were touching that was just shouting i think it's time to buy how much is a montage keyboard calculate it and get us the amount amen we're going to buy it two point what one point what whatever we are going to buy this year amen as you are clapping it's your money too it's my money and your money say amen no, listen, God told me this year that he will raise sudden millionaires amongst us. Yeah. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? Sudden millionaires. Some of you that are laughing, you are, you are the ones that God will do it for. And the reason is, listen, the reason is so that the kingdom of God can advance. Recently, I think there was, they held the Grammy Award. Is that true? I didn't watch it. But I just know as news. There's no need for me to watch that kind of thing. But I heard that there was a lot of complaint on social media. That there was a lot of satanism and the rest. Is that true? Yeah, that's because they have money. Instead of us complaining, let's push the gospel like they are doing too. And it cannot happen without money. Amen. If all of us here were millionaires... Will take this city by a storm. Are you hearing me? So if we say it's one point or two point, if we have twenty millionaires here, that's more money. Some people can stand up and just give one million, give one million. Now I know we have a lot of projects that we are into, but I also believe God for grace. We have to do something about that keyboard, and we have to do it this year. All right. So calculate it. Get the. Uh, market the current market price so that i can announce it before we are done and those of you online i hope you are hearing me we are going to buy that keyboard yamaha montage amen so that when we are worshiping god the sound from that keyboard can catapult you to higher realms say amen, amen. let's say better soup now waiting killer uh -huh. so you know amen you know one strategy i've used for my finance my finances is that i cannot enjoy what i've not given god it's, that's been my strategy for years now 
otherwise I would have been driving a car by now. But you know what? Because of that, God has given me things I didn't plan for. Amen? And the car will come soon. But let's do for God. The Bible says, give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. And give to God. Question. It says, give to God what belongs to God. The question is, what belongs to God? You. What belongs to God? You. So if you belong to God, who has your shirt? Who owns your car? You are not talking. Somebody said, Apostle, just leave this matter and preach your message. Amen. No, I'm helping you. If you belong to God, then all that you have should be surrendered to Him. And oh, by the way, um, Bro Arhel, the Spirit of God told me to say to you, you see, she stood up. <laughs> you and your wife, please stand. The Spirit of God said to me while you were giving your testimony to tell you and your wife, I will speak in coded languages. Yes, sir. To tell the two of you to continue what you have been doing. Amen. And yes, be sir. faithful in it. Yes, sir. Because he has not started with you. Amen. Yes, sir. The two of you understand what I'm saying, ba? Yes, sir. God bless you. Sit down. Amen. God rewards faithfulness, I tell you. Before you envy the sudden rising of some people, check their track record. If you see a small boy all of a sudden being used by God to do mighty things, it's not just a small boy by age. Check the wilderness he came from. Are you hearing me? God rewards faithfulness. And everyone that has been faithful with God in one area or the other, this year is your year of reward. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Alright, time is far gone. Let's go into the word of God. We started a teaching series um, two Sundays ago. The dominion systems of the kingdom. Let me have my tablet please. The dominion systems of the kingdom. The dominion systems of the kingdom. And we began to x-ray... Um, the principles, the laws that govern the operations of the kingdom of God on earth. Remember Jesus told his disciples that it has been given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom. Mysteries are hidden secrets. It is by these secrets that we have access into the kingdom of God and all the possibilities that are contained therein. If you can hear me say amen. amen. This you will have me say these are keys keys to the kingdom of god that can allow the possibilities in heaven to find expression on the earth on earth i mean to say so that everything that is possible within god's realm can be made available and can be possible within the realm of men it all has to do with your understanding of the systems of the kingdom of God. And when you understand how the systems of God's kingdom operates, when you understand the many systems which gives you access to all the possibilities that exist in God, you will be able to leave heaven on earth and demonstrate the superiority of God's kingdom amongst men. In other words, the results around your life will clearly demarcate you and show and distinguish that you are operating by a higher law so the limitations of men will become a stepping stone for you that's why it says when men say there is a casting down you will say exhortation has come in the midst of the same circumstance but because you have an understanding of the systems of an invisible and a superior kingdom a kingdom that is above and beyond that is not limited by the limitations of this realm when you have this understanding you will live a life that can be defined in one word dominion because dominion simply means to rise above and to stay above are you hearing what i'm saying so even if digital what what they call that cryptocurrency or forex crash you are still above financially the reason is because though you are a forex trader yet your wealth is controlled by the by a system that is not determined by the science of men 
Are you hearing me? That's why you see that all that we do on earth, every profession, every occupation, everything you do, these are just channels, outlets for the covenant blessings that you stand to enjoy in the kingdom to find expression. At least if you are not doing anything, EFCC can come after you. But if you are doing something, the hand will allow you. Not knowing that what you are doing is only a camouflage. There is a system behind you that allows you to prosper. That's what happened to Abraham. Everywhere he went to, he prospered. Abraham understood the principles of the kingdom of God. He understood how the systems of the kingdom of God operated. Such that when he was to be separated from Lot, here was what he told Lot. He said, why should we strive together? He said, the land is before us. He said, anywhere you choose and go to, I'll go to the other place. If you choose left, I'll go right. If you choose right, I'll go left. What was on Abraham's life? That made him so sure that regardless of where he found himself, he will remain rich and prosperous. It's called dominion. Somebody say dominion. And that is what we need to establish. We need to understand because this year you will walk in dominion. You sat on your mouth. Dominion is when you produce results that are beyond your age. When your life portrays a level of excellence that is beyond the limitations of your environment. Dominion is remaining above a particular system. Because you are operating or you are functioning by another system. Do you understand me? And that's what we want to you know, explore and establish. The first system we looked at was the system of prayer. And we agree that prayer is the system of communication and interaction in the kingdom of God. In the realm of spirits. For you to interact with a higher dimension. With the realm of the spirit. With the realm where God dwells. You need to understand and hold on to the place of prayer. It is also a system for communication. Communication is not just you talk, I talk. No. Communication also means to share. Alright? In King James translation, he uses that word communication. The communication of your faith. The sharing of your faith. Communication also means to transport, to translate. That if you need to shift things from the realm of the spirit into this realm, you must understand prayer. That if you want to learn how to manipulate the things that are on earth, you need to understand the place of prayer. It's like a control room. It is from there that you control everything that is around you. So that your life is a reflection of the victories that you have achieved in the place of prayer per time. Your life is a reflection of the laws and the mysteries of the kingdom of God that you have interfaced with by reason of your perseverance in prayer. Because prayer also opens you up to revelation. The place of prayer is the place of revelation. There is no revelation outside of prayer. Any form of revelation outside of prayer is divination. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? And we saw a lot that I don't have time to go into. I would, I, would, I would love every one of us here listening and those online, please get this teaching, the dominion systems of the kingdom. Listen to it at least twice this year. Amen. It will, you will experience a powerful shift. Your eyes will be open to certain realities. And the Lord be glorified in Jesus' name. Amen. Now let's talk about two, two systems today. And then next Sunday we'll talk about two. I have about eight. But spare me the remaining three. If you have five and you work with it, it's okay. If you are not jealous, say amen. amen. I tell you, even the one you just heard, the last two Sundays, is enough. Right? It's enough. It's not just in your hearing, it's in your application, in your practice. Wisdom comes in your obedience. The Bible says wisdom is justified by her children. It's in your obedience that wisdom comes. You don't need too much. Just hold one and practice it very well. But I see spiritual giants that are listening to me right now that will give themselves to practice these five. And your life will become a sign and a wonder. In the name of Jesus. 
Number two, light. Light. System number two, light. That's why I sang that song. Light of the world. You step down into the darkness. Open my eyes that I may see. Oh, light of the world. You step down into the darkness. And you I am here I am to worship here I am to bow down oh here I am to, to say that you're my God all together all together all together Light me, Lord, light me, Lord, light me, Lord, like a candle, light me, Lord, light me, Lord, light me, Lord. Don't just sing it, it's a prayer. Please light me, Lord, light me, Lord, light me, Lord. It one more time. Light me, Lord. It's a prayer. Light me, Lord. Oh, God. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. May God open our eyes and supply us with the light of life. In the name of Jesus. The Bible says in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3, According as His divine power had given us all things that pertains to life and godliness. This scripture is a conclusion. Conclusion of the fact that everything that you will need, not only to survive, but to thrive, to succeed, and to grow as a Christian, spiritually and physically. Look at it. It says, pertaining to life and godliness. Of course, the life there is eternal life. So it has to do uh, with your sojourning on earth. Material, physical things. And then unto godliness, your walk with God. So everything that is needed to sustain you spiritually, financially, materially, to ensure that your life on earth is decorated as an ambassador of the kingdom because for goodness sake you are an ambassador of the kingdom of god you need to go and do a little research about who an ambassador is first of all an ambassador is called your excellency the same title that the president of his nation is called because an ambassador is the highest diplomat of, a, of the government of a nation representing that nation in another nation so this ambassador will be treated as though he's the president of his country are you hearing me now that's who you are on earth and that is the reason why before you were saved God made available everything that you need to thrive to survive to succeed and to do well on earth to represent his kingdom one of the traits of the kingdom of god is riches another trait is power another trait is wisdom another in fact we will do the dominion systems of the kingdom either at the end of this year or next year volume two i, I want to show you another dimension entirely You say, but Apostle, how, how come God has provided all this and I'm still the way I am? First of all, it has to do with your knowledge. You have to be aware of everything that you have available in Christ. 
you have to be fully and don't claim that you understand what i'm saying with all due respect you have to be aware because when we begin to examine every part of our lives if for instance i ask you what is god's secret to deliverance when you find when you find the individual uh, 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 um, loss for words to give an answer to that question or stammering or not having sufficient uh, um, knowledge it means that he is not aware of the system of deliverance so this is beyond just reading your bible this is a full awareness a discovery that brings you into a full awareness of who you are and what you have available and then from awareness you need to move into consciousness do you live your life conscious of these things that they have been made available for you my spiritual father told me something a while ago he said son in this spiritual tribe everywhere we go to we go with a with an entitlement mentality you know what it means it means for instance if i travel to yobe state i have every right to eat the good of that state whether the people in the state have touched it or not you know there are some people in this country they are not from oil producing states but they have oil wells anywhere they discover something in this country they must have a stake there there are some people right that's how it is for you you must live in that consciousness i believe that the earth has ears to hear and one of the things that the earth must be reminded is that it belongs to the lord and i'm here representing that lord of heaven therefore when i enter a city the riches and the good of the good of that city must come to me we traveled last month went somewhere when we we're coming back we we're racing to the airport just to meet up with our flight and somebody called me and said ah, apostle i have a gift for you i said i'm sorry we are, we are already gone find a way to just get it and the gift came here and met me are you hearing me now that's something somebody will pursue and say ah let me know there's something you will know that will make these things chase after you and from today god will open your eyes yeah. says he has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness how give us that scripture quickly please that's second peter 1 verse 3 please quickly we'll have no time through the knowledge of him who called us to glory and virtue so it is true knowledge somebody say true knowledge. true knowledge there's a scripture that says true knowledge shall the righteous be delivered the first kind of deliverance for the righteous is deliverance from ignorance true knowledge he didn't say my people perish for lack of prayer he didn't say my people perish for lack of money he didn't say because even in scarcity you can enjoy abundance and plenty he said my people perish for lack of what knowledge what is light first of all let me establish this truth that physically when you talk about light you are talking about light as one of the natural um, components of this realm that is an element of the supernatural light is one of the natural elements that can help you interface with the supernatural there are about four to five of them there is the earth it is natural isn't it but through the earth a man can interface with the supernatural is that true good water is there wind is there as i'm speaking now my voice is carried to your ears through the element of wind isn't it imparting into you a supernatural experience and a supernatural deposit so i'm taking advantage of one of the natural elements is that true another element is light and we want to discuss it 
Light is God's word. Light is God's word. Psalms 105 verse 1, verse 1, 119, I beg to say, verse 105 and verse 130. It says, Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. I'll come back to this verse. Verse 130. The entrance of your word gives light so the word is light isn't it and when the word of god comes to a man light has come to that man it gives understanding it's showing us one of the components of light that i would this i will talk about further it gives understanding to the simple because understanding is one of the components of light Light is first of all the word of God. Genesis chapter 1 verse 3 the Bible says and God said the first thing we saw in the creation story was light and God said it was his word let there be and there was. So the word of God is light. Now back to Psalms 119 verse 105. Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light to my path. It shows you two um two modes of operation of the word of god as light of course you know that light gives visibility is that true light gives manifestation light makes things visible makes things manifest isn't it there are other things that light can do light attracts darkness has never attracted is that true uh -huh. it's light that attracts so the amount of light you have from the word of God will determine the physical and spiritual forces that are attracted to you per time. This thing we call favor, it can be attracted and it can stay. Money has wings, it can fly, not favor. Are you hearing me? There's no need to be favored today and the next time you see it is in March. No. There is something you can know. There is an amount of light, of illumination you can carry by the word of God that makes it a permanent resident surely goodness and mercy shall follow me how many times all the days of my life two modes of operations we see here first of all we see the word as a lamp and as light well both is the same thing but we see light here first of all to mean guidance your word is a lamp to my feet if you have ever held a lantern the light that a lantern carries is not um is not divergent as it were let me use a little of physics here it's not divergent the rays don't go out is convergent so the light of a lantern or a lamp can only allow you to see what is around it now that speaks of guidance part time part time when the spirit of god guides you or the word of god guides you part time in other words guidance for a particular season it doesn't show you tomorrow it just shows you what to do today it shows you how to live today it shows you how to survive today that's guidance then it says and a light to my path that speaks of the future that is vision now so this has to do with direction so you see the word of god operating in two forms first of all as a guide and then to give direction guiding you every day and directing your paths as touching God's future for you. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace are not of evil. To give you what? A future direction. When those thoughts are revealed to you, light has come. It gives you a future. It gives you direction. It tells you what to do about this issue next year. It tells you how the next 10 years will be. You will not move by pressure from people. You know, some of us are like that. 
People just start saying, when are you getting married? When are you getting married? Ah, you're under pressure then. You just jump and get married. And you did not decide what you will do so that you can give food to somebody's daughter. Now you are married three months later. There's no food in the house. God is not a God of pressure group. Are you hearing me? In as much as people are pressured, even me, I can be one of the people pressurizing you. Amen. Wait for direction first. When did God speak to me about this ministry? 2013. When did the name come? 2016. When did we start? 2018. When did we start full operational service? 2020. But it came before. Because God knew that we will encounter all kinds of challenges on the way. So be armed with this word of direction. I would have jumped out that 2013 and said, God has called me, let's go. No. There was a word to guide. That one was for direction. But there was a word that guided and said, wait till the time. He said, for the vision is for an appointed time. Is that true? This night, may God open your eyes about the future. I don't know who I'm talking to, but may God open your eyes and bring you clarity as touching your future. In the name of Jesus. So light is the word of God. Ecclesiastes 11 verse 7. Very wonderful scripture. Give it to us in King James translation. Wonderful scripture. Keep it at the back of your mind this year. It said truly the light is sweet. Light is what? Sweet. And a pleasant thing it is for the eyes to behold the sun. Because the sun is the brightest luminary in our solar system is that true in our galaxy the sun is the brightest luminary which is a prophetic symbol of the word of god the bible says in psalms 84 i think it's verse 10 the lord god is a sun and a shield john chapter 1 in the beginning was the word and the word was god and the word was god so if the word of god is god when the Bible says the Lord God is a sun and a shield, it means that the word of God is what? A sun. In other words, it is the brightest form of, uh, of, of, of light, of illumination that you can carry. Visions are good. Thank God for visions. But there's nothing as sure as the word of God. He said we have a more sure word of prophecy. When God guides you by his word, you can never miss your way. You can never miss your way. It is the word of God that brings conviction in a man. Even when everybody is saying a different thing. It is the word that God has spoken. He said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded. That means that light as touching the word of God operates in two ways. Or, you know, reveals itself in two ways. It comes firstly as the word of God. The written word of God that we have. You can study the scriptures. You can study God's word, the Bible. And based on what you see God did, how he dealt with people, you can pick principles from that that will order your life aright. However, the surer one is the second. The voice of the spirit of God. It's one thing to be led by the word of God, the written word of God. It's another thing to be led by the voice of the Spirit. That is the spoken word of God. That one is surer as touching life and destiny. Man shall not live by, every, by bread alone, but by every word, not that is written, but that proceeds. Because the voice of the Spirit is your surest way for obtaining divine direction and you know that light brings guidance and direction if you are here scream amen, amen. light first john chapter 1 verse 5 the bible tells us that god is light he said this is the message that we have heard and we have passed on to you that god is light not only is god light god is the source of light james chapter 1 verse 17 every good 
gift and every perfect gift cometh from above from the father of light the word father there is the word abba it means source source the source of light the source of illumination he is the source of light he is the light of men he god is also the light of men john chapter 1 verse 4 in him was life and that life was the light of men john chapter 9 4 9 i beg to say okay verse 9 rather give us verse 9 of john chapter 1 verse 9 do you have the passions translation the passions translation look for it if you don't have no problem he said that was the true light which gives light to every man coming into the world the light there to every man speaks of identity so the true light which is god gave light which is identity to every individual that came on earth that's why we have over eight billion people but no one has the same destiny in case you don't know, know it today no one is like you are you hearing what i'm saying so stop copying anybody that is the true light that gives light god that gives identity to everyone so an encounter with god is firstly an encounter with your programmed and original identity do you hear what i'm saying because he is the light of men you don't have it the passion translation okay we'll, we'll, we'll get it someday he is also called the light of the world john chapter 9 verse 5 you see as long as i'm in the world i am the light of the world Now write this down. Ignorance is the knowledge that brings fear. Revelation is the knowledge that brings faith. Write it down. In fact, put it on your status right now. Say amen. amen. Write it down, put it on your status. But make sure you put the hashtag with my name. If not, I appear with Cain this night in your dream. Amen. So when I say that, some of you are laughing. Don't worry, very soon you will see it. You know, I used to say that if there will be an accident, I will disappear. Is that true? And many of you think I'm joking. Let me show you a scripture to tell you that I know what I'm saying. Colossians chapter 3 verse 4. He says, and when Christ, who is your light, appears, you shall appear with him in glory. You shall appear. If you can appear, that means you can disappear. Well, come on, talk to me now. So if any accident will happen while I'm in the car, if it will happen, I'm, I will disappear. Look for how to hold me. It will appear in my house. This is free of charge by the light of God's word. This is not juju. No people go and do juju. They travel to Maraman, they give them charm. They cut their hand, put it in their... That anytime you are going to be in an accident or an attack, you will disappear. Right? No, you don't have to do that charm. I'm showing you how cheap it can come. Many years ago, my spiritual father was having a retreat in his small house. Then he was still single. And in the dead of the night, while he was praying, somebody came and tore his net and pointed a gun through the window at him. I said, bring your wallet and every money with you. He told the person, no. The person said, bring your wallet or I will shoot you. He told the person, shoot now. Do dead men die twice? true story and then the hand was withdrawn gradually and went away <laughs> you need to carry you need to walk with flood light by the spirit of God in your life because there are situations that will come there are portions in life there are times seasons in life where you will be faced with darkness you need to carry sufficient life light that will deliver you and the people around you he says shoot do dead men die twice <laughs> ignorance is the knowledge that brings fear revelation is what the knowledge that brings faith i think we can stop here let's continue next week amen abby ephesians 5 verse 13 to 14 
Ephesians 5 verse 13 to 14. It says, but all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light. For whatever makes manifest is what? Light. Therefore, he says, awake you who sleep, arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. Christ will give you light. We know that light is the word of God. But let's look at the composition of light. Light is the expression of what I call a threefold chord. A threefold chord. You remember in Ecclesiastes it says two can withstand in a threefold chord. It's not easily broken, isn't it? So there are three things that come together to make light in context of our teaching today. You need these three things to find expression in your life to be fully ascertained. That you are walking in light. What are these three? Wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. If we agree that light has the capacity to deliver, it has the capacity to enthrone, it has the capacity to empower a man to walk in dominion, then we need to understand what it is composed of. Let's not treat it as an abstract subject. Let's treat it as something we can understand. Three things coming together that makes for the expression of light. Wisdom, knowledge, and what? Understanding. Knowledge is information acquired. Knowledge is information that you acquire or you discover. Understanding is the ability to comprehend that which is known. It's one thing to know a thing, it's another thing to understand what you know. In Acts chapter 8, when Philip was walking by the desert, the road by the desert, and he met the utopian eunuch, here was what he asked the man. The man was reading the book of Isaiah chapter 53. Here was what Philip asked the man. He didn't ask him, do you know what you are reading? He said, understandest that what thou readest you can know a thing and not understand some of you used to cram before exams if you are like that can you wave give god a wave look at them i know now you are preparing to cram your way through your masters and your phd no problem you can do that but when it comes to the word of god don't cram it to know it Understanding is comprehension. It's coming in terms with the facts that you have acquired, that you have received. One of the things that is lacking in the body of Christ is understanding. Understanding. In fact, even in prayer, I say you can pray in the spirit and yet your understanding is unfruitful. It means your mind. While wisdom... is the application of what you have known and what you have understood when you understand something you put it to work that is called wisdom when you apply it so you can't claim to have wisdom if there are no works around you to justify you isn't it isn't it that's why jesus said wisdom is justified by her children by her works so there are truths that you know from the word of god do you understand it bring you all the tithes you know that scripture isn't it do you understand it and if you have understood it are you doing it wisdom is in the doing Now, when you have these three forces working in your life, then you are working in light. Knowledge acquired, comprehension attained, that is understanding, and then wisdom applied. It projects you as a man of light, and you walk in a life that is nothing short of success and dominion. 
The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 33 verse 6, Wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of your times. Are you seeing the composition of light now playing out? It brings stability. When you have these forces at work in your life. Proverbs chapter 2 verse 6, what does it say? It says, For the Lord giveth wisdom, out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. Wisdom is always direction inclined. It's always directive. So when the Bible says the Lord giveth wisdom, He's showing you what to do. So that in doing it, you will profit. Are you hearing me? The Bible says the Lord giveth wisdom and out of His mouth, knowledge and understanding. You see the three forces coming together in this verse. This is light. When you have received knowledge from God that you understand and the wisdom in applying it, Listen, if I write down for you all the ingredients that you can use to prepare fried rice and give it to you, does it mean that you will prepare fried rice? You will prepare another rice. Because it's not just in the ingredients. There's also something called the recipe. Isn't it? Good. So, you receive the knowledge of the ingredients that can make for fried rice. You need to understand these ingredients. And then in application, you need to know when to apply them. Because you can miss one thing and it becomes colored rice, not fried rice. Brothers and sisters, that is how light works. So the knowledge of the word that comes from God to you that is understood the Bible says the entrance of his word giveth understanding so when the word of God comes to you listen you can read it from the Bible that's knowledge and you may not understand it you will understand when the spirit of God in you explains what you are reading sometimes he can explain it by bringing it out of you again you have read it before then he brought that scripture out and then it's like the scripture opens up is that not what you say and he begins to show you the knots the dots begin to connect sometimes it your understanding will be opened just by one word in that verse for instance i've always read that scripture when the enemy comes in like a flood the spirit of god will raise a standard against it and I used to think that the enemy was the flood. When the enemy comes in like a flood. But then one day the Holy Ghost made me read it in another translation. And he said, when the enemy comes in, comma, like a flood. And the Holy Spirit told me, if you understand simile, the use of like and as, you will understand that just the way when it is flooding it in a place, it, the water level rises above the ground surface. That's how the Holy Spirit will rise above the attacks of the enemy in your life. How else would you explain when he say that he will deliver you from arrows that fly by day and the terror by night? He raises a standard. And you know what? Let me give you another understanding he just gave me now. Sometimes the standard is he lifts you above the circumstances. Nay, in all these things, we are more. In all these things. So you see the man laughing when they told him that his mother had an accident in the village. He has been risen above. Understanding, knowledge, and wisdom. We rule by light. We rule by light. Oh, by the way, another scripture to support Proverbs chapter 2 verse 6. You know, we're talking about the composition of light. Another scripture to support that is Colossians 1 verse 9. That you will be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. You see the three forces there. So that's another scripture. We rule by light. John chapter 1 verse 5. Verse 5 rather. And the light shines in darkness and the darkness comprehends it not. It shows you the superiority of light there. 
Genesis 1 16 to 18. Let me show you something. Let me show you how we rule by light. When you have a good command of God's knowledge, wisdom, and understanding around your life, this is how you will rule. Let me show you. Then God made two great lights the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. And God set them in the firmament of the heavens to give light on the earth and to rule over the day and over the night. Even the night is, is because there's darkness, isn't it? So even in the midst of darkness, God apportioned light to still rule. So God never planned the universe without with darkness. And to divide the light from the darkness, and God saw that it was good. Now let me show you how we rule. The Bible says he made two great lights. Hear this. And then the Bible also says, it, it speaks of the, the light it, 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 it created. The two great lights there were the sun and the moon. The moon is the lesser light. This is because science have explained to us that the moon does not have lumin, uh, you know, light in itself. The, loom, the moon is only a luminous body. It is the light that it attracts or it receives from the sun that it diffracts or reflects. So the sun rules the day while the moon at night. At night when you have darkness, the moon is still shining. So there is still light. Now in a night where there is no moon, there are still stars to keep the, galaps, the galaxy luminous. Is that true? That means that regardless of the season that you are in, there must be light. In the day there is light everywhere. That means when things are good, when things are okay, you are still ruling. That's dominion. But in the night, what I call the night seasons of life, the night seasons of life are when things are not good. When you are confessing the I am confession and you are seeing another thing in your life. Those are what I call night seasons. Job 35 verse 10, he said, Where is God, my God, who giveth songs in the night times? I don't know if it's New King James that says night seasons. So it's speaking about a figurative moment of life when circumstances seem to work against you. Even in that, God still leaves you with a portion of light. That light can be in a song. Even in my darkest now, through the sorrows and the pain, I will sing. How many of you know that song? I will praise. Lift my hands to honor you. Because of what is true. I will sing. I will sing. I will praise. I will praise. Even in my darkest night. Through the sorrows and the pain. What will you do? I will sing. I will pray. I will pray. In my hands to honor you. Because your word is true. Because your word is true. I will sing. An example is a scripture where Job said, For I know that my Redeemer liveth. And he shall stand at last on the earth. He said, even if this king is destroyed, yet in my flesh, I will see. If the skin has been destroyed, which flesh are you? How? He's saying that I know that there is resurrection after death. Sometimes the light in your season, your down times of life can even just be a song. One song. One song for a whole week. Just that one song. Everywhere you go, disappointment after disappointment. And every time you are faced with a disappointment, the song will rise inside of you. You go to pray. Instead of God to come and then distribute cash so that the hunger can go, that song comes out again. Have you been in a situation in your life where you held on one song or one prophecy for three years, for two years, for five years? No, this is our generation, microwave. 
That's why we don't have men and women of stature. We don't have strong Christians. We don't have people with stamina. God cannot, co- God cannot commit a ministry to nations to you. Because little things make you afraid. You fall. It's you that say you want to speak to nations. Are you ready for criticism? That comes with a man that is influencing nations. You want all the thousands of likes. That's good. But what of if the thousands of likes come because you are criticized for something you didn't do? Will you be able to stand that period? That's why in all, honest, in all honesty, ministry is not a profession. It's a calling. You can't be flashed. God cannot flash you. It's either I call you or he didn't call you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Because your life will never look like the normal. Put that as hashtag. When you go back to your hostel or when you go back home to your colleagues, tell them, God, call me. God, no flash me. That's the reason why you are going through what you are going through. Because he called you. If he didn't call you, you will not go through this. Healing evangelists. And you are the one suffering from sickness. There's a grace upon your life for people to be fruitful. Yet you don't have children. It's because he called you. That's why you are going through all this mess. But here is another light that will bring you out of this misery. It says, faithful is he who has called you. For he will do it. Do you know what it means to, for a man to call himself faithful? In, I've heard all kinds of names. I've never heard anybody give his child faithful. It means that regardless of what is happening around you, what he said to you, he will do. The Bible says this was why Abraham was strong in faith, giving glory to God. Because he knew that what God has said, he was able to perform. Even in your night seasons, there is light. So it is with light that we rule and that's dominion. There will be points in this year where it will not be sweet. Oh, I hope you know. There will be points in this year where it will not be pleasant. But when you have light, you remain the same. You will never, never change. You are the Lord. You remain the same For you will never, never change Yes, Lord, you are the Lord You remain the same You are the Lord you change and now you are I'm prophesying to somebody now I don't know what what side of life you are in right now I don't know what your situation looks like but I came to you today with a God that does not change your situations do not dethrone or enthrone him he remains God He's the God of the valley and the God of the mountain. You will never say. God change. That's my God you are. You are You Speak in tongues for two minutes. He does not change. He never changes. That is why you sons of Jacob are not consumed. He's the God of the day and the God of the night. He's the God in the good times and in the bad times. 
He's the God of the mountains and yet the God of the valleys. Your situations are surrounded by His goodness. That's my God, that's my God. Listen, there's so much to talk about with light here, but let me switch to the second system. I'm sorry, this is, I'm, I'm, I'm cutting out half. Let me switch to the second one. I'm switching not because of time alone, I'm switching because the anointing has, has shifted. Now from this point, as I talk from now till we start praying, there are people you are going to be receiving impregnations in your spirit. Power will be entering you where you are seated. From now, as I talk from now. Some of them, they will not be able to hold it. It's like fire. It's like a weight of the glory of God will begin to enter you. The Bible says, the spirit entered into me and set me on my feet. So when you see people flying up and down, falling down, those motions they were not emotionally discharged no there is a power and a weight that can enter you and change your motion that testifies to the fact that you have been impregnated with life that is from god in fact there are two of you as i'm teaching now in just less than two or three minutes your eyes will be open in the spirit and you will see light right now as i'm teaching that about two, at least two of you you will see light your eyes will be open and all you will see is just light system number three the anointing the anointing now you cannot be a believer and not amongst all the basic things that you experience in the kingdom of god understand or lack the understanding of the anointing Bring your strings up a little. The anointing is one of the basic things that every believer should understand. The kingdom of God revolves around it. The anointing is the divine enabling of the Holy Spirit. Yes, sir, that's it. The divine enabling of the Holy Spirit. Now that you are in Christ, the empowerment that you receive, the enabling that you receive, God did not plan that you will be in Christ and live a natural life. So therefore, what is the energy for this new life that you are living? It's called the anointing. The ability of the Spirit of God. It is the wisdom of God for the rescue and the freedom of man. <laughs> The wisdom of God for the rescue and the freedom of man. Did he not say that it shall come to pass that the burden of the Assyrian shall be taken from your shoulder and the yoke from your neck and the yoke is destroyed just by one thing. Shout it. The anointing. So when a man interfaces with the anointing, it is important for him to begin to know that everything that looks like a yoke or an impediment spiritually or naturally must give way because the first thing the anointing is programmed to do is to be sensitive to yokes burdens embargoes weights impediments limitations and the bible says the yoke is destroyed it is a removed it's destroyed that is the reason why the scripture can say that affliction shall not rise a second time why because the anointing has done its job so if you find a man that is experiencing all kinds of limitations setbacks obstructions he may be in christ but he has not been exposed to the the system of the kingdom called the anointing it is real it is more than talk it is real and some of you will catch it this night it is real when you are anointed you will know it Look at what David said in 2 Samuel chapter 3. Look for that verse. 2 Samuel 3, I think it's verse 21 or so. He said, I am this day weak, yet anointed king. I am weak, oh, yet I know that I am anointed. <laughs> I am sick, yet I am anointed. I am broke, 
yet I am anointed. Now, yet I am anointed. You see, it 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 it, it vetoes natural limitations. And you know, I thank God for the anointing. It's not sensitive to gender or to race or to social status. It comes upon a man and makes that man like a god. It is real, brothers and sisters. Let me tell you, it is real. When you carry it, you know you carry it. You don't have to be in ministry to be anointed. But you have to be anointed to be in ministry. So if you are anointed, ministry has started. You don't need signboard. One of my mentors used to say those days, very powerful and prophetic. He used to say, anytime he's prophesying, he say, I'm a prophet without signboard. You know what that means? I don't need to announce to you that I hear from God. When you are anointed, brothers and sisters, life takes a different tone. I know what I'm telling you by experience. If I said I didn't know, it would be a lie. I know it by experience. Life becomes easy. All of a sudden, protocols can be bypassed. What kind of system is this? It's a mystery. When there is a cry from a family, generation upon generation of yokes, ancestral patterns, witchcraft attacks, all kinds of things, the only answer to that cry is for God to lift one man and anoint him. That's all. That man is enough to bring down the altars of Baal and bring deliverance to a nation. By a prophet, he brought them out of Egypt. And by a prophet, they were preserved. You know what God said to tell you right now? Some of you are the prophet that will bring deliverance to your communities. Some of you are the prophets that will bring deliverance to your state. Your state. Your state. Some of you, the hand of God is on your life this night. And a time will come where, where you are, where you come from, may not be recognized internationally for anything. But because of that grace and anointing that is on your life, people will travel from different nations to look for you. Your state will be forced to have an airport because of you. Oh, you didn't hear what I said. I think there's an airport in worry now. I think there's an airport in Wari now. It's not because of any, the, the real airport was in Asaba, but they had to make another one in Wari because the traffic into Wari, they have oil, they have gas, and they have generals in that place, spiritual generals. You, you will make where you come from internationally recognized. So, some of you need to write it down. It's a prophecy already to you this night regardless of what is happening to you you will become the landmark for interaction international recognition for where you come from i'm telling you who would have known that there's a tribe called tarok but today god has raised a man called apostle joshua selman people will only tell you that hey, our people are only good for soldiers in the army and God has raised generals from that place. So it's not about where you come from. It's not about the name. It's not about anything. Just be anointed. The anointing is the power of God for the manifestation of sonship. The power of God for the manifestation of sonship. As a son, God has given you all authority in the name of Jesus. To manifest it, you need the anointing authority over demons authority over systems authority over principalities and powers look at what the bible says the bible says of jesus that he is the head over principalities and powers then he now made you his body so if he is the head and you are the body who is above principalities and powers is you do you understand that he said, for you are seated with Christ in heavenly places. It is the anointing that makes those truths a living reality in your life. How else can you explain it? praying for somebody on phone? 
and then somebody who has been bedridden stands up how else do you explain no, the anointing it breaks all kinds of laws There are two dimensions to the operation of the anointing. There's what I call the anointing within and there's what I call the anointing upon. The anointing within and the anointing upon. First John chapter 2 verse 20 tells us, O Ramasanda Rakelo Morokota Sandaya, Riki Teleromo Kushanda Ramakata Yegoromo Sata, Breskilo Tolamara Tambas Kama, Something is entering this hall right now. Something that looks like a mist. Like a mist. It's glory, but it's coming like mist. And it's resting upon the heads of people. That's what I'm seeing. I'm telling you, you didn't come for an ordinary service. Now, how do I see it? The anointing. 1 John 2.20 Let me see if I can preach for 5 minutes and we are done. The Bible says, But you have an anointing from the Holy One and you know all things. Verse 27, it says, But the anointing which you have received dwells in you and teaches you all things. So you you have no need that any man should teach you anything. But the same anointing that abides in you is truth and is not lie. It dwells in you and it teaches you. That is the anointing within that is the spirit of God inside of you helping you to live out the life of Christ helping you to understand and to live that organic life it teaches you things in other words it helps you to discern that's what it means see by teaching doesn't mean it will be saying A for apple B no 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 it really means discern it helps you to discern truth in all things and it's no lie So somebody can be lying to you, but the anointing will pick it. You know, science tried to create what they call a lie detector. And I know some of us trust more in the lie detector. Me, I don't trust in the lie detector. If I mean you, I just need to look at you. That thing, will it will signal. Teaches you all things. The Bible says in Isaiah 48 that it teaches you to profit. How? It's by the anointing. The same anointing that will tell you invest here. No, invest. In fact, the anointing is what cooperates with the supply of light. It is by that anointing that you know that you will not be rich by your investment. You will be rich by your obedience. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? A few years ago, somebody brought a business plan to me. Wonderful. Explain like this. If you do like this, like this, you put like this, put in money, you push, you shift to this place from here, you shift here before you know it. Why here? I said, My God. Then I took my money and, and sank it. As soon as my money sank into it, the Holy Ghost said, Your money is gone. I say, Ah, Holy Ghost, no, no. That money cannot go. That's serious money. I mean, real money. The Holy Ghost said, but he didn't consult me now. He's in you and he teaches you. And you need not that any man will teach you. I said, oh God, what do I do now? He said, who told you that you'll be rich by investment or by business? I said, I don't understand. He said, not everybody in this life will be rich because of the business they do. (laughs) I'm careful of what I'm saying now because I don't want to grace lazy people. Because if you just hear this one and go back and not do anything, when poverty has knocked on your door five times a week. So it is in consulting the anointing within you that you understand what it wants you to do. He told me, he said, I told you two years ago, prior to that, I said, I told you two years ago what to do. Keep doing it. And I've never regretted one day for five years now. You're for you, the anointing may say, Go and buy goats and rear it. And when other people's goats are dying, your goats, the anointing within, it teaches you, it leads you. You can be in your house and it can tell you, Stand up, stand up, go out of the house, you go out, and it navigates you 
into somebody's house and you enter there and see somebody at the point of death in the name of Jesus and the person comes back to life the question is what if you were not there so how do you know that there was an attack there the anointing within the moment you become born again that anointing is inside of you it is by fellowship with the Holy Spirit that you will you will learn to interact with it is in every one of us with that one you can succeed through life most of you have said something said to me I came to tell you that something is the anointing within you there is the anointing upon it's called power somebody say power shout it again that one comes on you for service that one comes on you and makes you relevant that one comes on you and makes you a problem solver that one comes on you it is from above you shall receive power after the holy ghost has come upon you so you have the holy ghost within you at birth but you need power to come upon you tarry ye in jerusalem on you till you be endured with power from on high it is with power that you will be a witness it is with power that you will manifest your sonship on the earth power power the spirit of the lord is upon me isaiah 61 you remember the scripture because the lord has anointed me blah 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 jesus quoted it in luke chapter 4 verse 18 remember in verse 14 of luke chapter 4 the bible says and jesus returned in the power of the spirit in the power of the spirit in the power of the spirit he had the anointing within and he had the anointing upon jesus was one example of a man that carried both acts chapter 10 verse 38 this is where i close hear what the bible says how god anointed jesus of nazareth with the holy ghost and with power with the holy ghost and with power with the anointing within and the anointing upon he anointed jesus of nazareth with the holy ghost and with power 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 help them please he had both listen he had both and the bible says he went about doing good he didn't need for a crusade his presence was a crusade there's no way you have both and you can't do good things sometimes when i'm counseling people they come and they want to give me the genesis of their problem i have the revelation already i don't need your genesis if only you know that one word is going to be spoken over you that can turn things around i traveled one time and i met somebody a lady out of job not doing anything i had so much compassion so i prayed with her and i prophesied to her god didn't tell me no i prophesied because the the work of the prophetic is not only revelatory it's creative i love the creative part more because god gives the prophet the freelance to sketch on your destiny what he wants to see what i want to see for you is greatness what i want to see for you is dominion what i want to see for you is every affliction around you be arrested i thought i said i see i see an, inter an international organization calling you very soon and then i gave her some money i said before this money finish you get a call two days later they called her two days later now they say okay she's writing test she may be listening online now they say you write online test on saturday she tried to do the test at the time time was going and the thing was not opening she, and then i called her she sent me a text i called her i said shut down your laptop she shut it down. i said close it she closed it then I, I i made a confession that i asked her to repeat after me that's some things you don't pray for eh? the anointing has voice she made that confession when she put the system back it happened that the entire site of that organization went down because there was problem so they had to reschedule the test because of one person 
I prophesy to you, you will never be late this year. If you will arrive late, then you will become the latest. I said if you arrive late, you will become the latest. Are you ready to pray this night? I wish I had time to talk more. I wanted to show you several things that the anointing can do. When you are anointed, anybody that fights you is joking with his life. 1 Samuel 26 verse 9. David told his men, when they say, let's kill Saul. He said, can you stretch forth your hand against the Lord's anointed and be guiltless? Psalms 105 verse 14 and 15. He suffered no man to do them wrong. He rebuked kings for their sake, saying, Touch not my anointed and do my prophet. That's why I can't fight. Let the thing that is on me do the fighting. Sir. No. There are times when we can show our rights. We can do our luta. But no, you don't have to. That thing that is on you has been programmed to make angels work with you. I've seen, I've, I've had few, very few, very few visions of angels. My, my t- let me tell you, I think angels look more scary than demons. Let me tell you. Let me just tell you. Angels look more scary. Never did a demon appear in the Bible and they, they were afraid. But an angel appear and say, fear not. Because even his voice will make you afraid. It's like the sound of many waters. It was not God that spoke to Moses though. It was the angel of the Lord's presence that appeared to him. If God had appeared himself, Moses would have been dis- disintegrated. That's what the Bible says. An angel appeared. It was an angel, just an angel that appeared. An advanced party for God that appeared and fire was on the whole place. Then what if God appeared? That's why God told him, he said, I can't go in your midst. He will all die. So that, 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 I can't fight. I let it do the fighting. I may look like a fool that day, but don't worry. Just don't worry. I've seen an angel made of metal from head to feet. Iron, metal everywhere. You know those story books you read? The dressing of a knight. You see, that I've seen the angel like that. Huge with sword. I've seen him once or twice in our meetings. You watch anytime I'm making judgmental decrees, that angel is available. Now imagine that kind of individual following you. Which fight you want to fight again? That's why Jesus said, love those who hate you. <laughs> they slap you, turn the other cheek. Because as you go. Was it not God that appeared to Laban? And he told him, he said, be careful to either speak good or bad to Jacob. Jacob stole and ran away. Jacob was at fault. But God appeared. You see, you see, you see how God can be biased for his own. Don't you think that this night that angel can appear in the dream of all those who hate you and give them a lifetime warning? Tomorrow you just go to the office and see people who were hating you become nice. You heard the testimony of the young man that the priest told him. He said, we will not give you because you brought your pastor here. He said, which pastor? When he turned back, he saw me standing. Are you hearing me? You need to know how surrounded you are. And it's because of the anointing that, 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 you, that you carry. Some of you, I came this night to provoke what is on your head. To turn what is on your head from oil to fire. He maketh his angels, spirits, and, he, and his ministers flames of fire. Are you ready to pray this night? In two minutes, I want you to cry to the Lord. If what you need is light, cry to him. If what you need is the anointing, cry to him. Raise your voice and cry to him. Lord, I need an encounter with your with the anointing. I need an anointing for this season, this new season. Some of you need to cry and say, Lord, enlighten my darkness. 
Let the door of light be open to me. I'm tired of confusion. I'm tired of ignorance. Light. 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 Are you crying to him? Are you crying to him? the 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 Yeah. 
some declarations over us just listen well the power of God is everywhere touching people but just pay attention here if you can I'm going to speak over your lives by the privilege of the grace of God and I'm going to do it unusually calm today but I want to demonstrate something before we before I pray for you I want to demonstrate something for you. Now, these two ladies, come. Come. Yes, okay. Yes, two of you come. I want to demonstrate something. I need any brother, any brother at random, just come. Any brother. Okay, you sir, come. Yes. All right. So if you come, come up, come up. I want to show you something. I want you to watch this. Come up. Come, come up. You are not baptized. You know, some churches they say if you are not baptized, you can't come to the altar. Come, come up. Somebody shift these things for me. I want to show you something. And the reason is because I want to show you that these things are real. Okay? Now, I want you to stand here. Just stand. And face this place. Okay? Don't, I hope you'll not be shy. Huh? Please keep playing. I, I want to show you something. Alright? What it means to be anointed. It's one thing to be anointed, it's another thing to be conscious. Just help them wherever because God is touching people. It's one thing to be conscious of what you carry. Watch. Just watch this. Please, try not to be shy. Eh? I want you to go stand close to her. Huh? What's your name, sir? Nathaniel Jonah. Nathaniel. Okay. I want you to stand. I want you to look at her. Just look at her. Just look at him. Okay? He's looking at her, right? Nothing happened, isn't it? Okay. Just step aside, sir. Let me show you something. Come. I want you to look at me. If you can look into my eyes for at least 10 seconds. All right? Just look at look at my eyes. Look at my eyes. Look at me. Just I said at least 10 seconds. Now, what do you think is making her begin to move? Okay, let's try it again. I want you to try. Try your best. Just stay looking at my eyes, okay? What do you call this? Did I tell her before now that when I call you upstage, do this? Okay, stand. Stand, okay? What did I say? Stand, isn't it? So she will not fall. Now you come back. Stay very close. Look into her eyes. Nothing happened, isn't it? 
Okay, step aside. I don't even need to look at her eyes. All I need to do is just wave my hand over her. And the power of God will rest upon her because it's something I carry. Okay, so watch this. Look, look at that. If, if you walk with this consciousness, listen. If you walk with this consciousness every day, then anybody that stands before you or in your presence is standing in the presence of the same power that you both represent and that you carry. If there's something in me that can make her lose her balance, then that thing can be reprogrammed to change people's lives. Because the first law of thermodynamics is that energy is neither destroyed or created, but it is converted from one. So if there's power that can make them fall and shout, that power can be converted to speak into your finance and turn every poverty into riches. You didn't hear what I said. All I need to do is focus the power on the spot of your life that needs attention. There are many people, I've had testimonies, we've had it here. And even, not here, but there are many people who have called me, a, a loved one of theirs was under an attack, affliction or something, and dying or something. And they tried calling my phone, and my phone was off. And they sent a message to me. And by the time my phone will come on, that person was healed without my talking with them. That means the anointing in you is living. It's a living thing. You can send it. He sent his word. You can release the anointing through words. There are things you no longer shout about. You can determine your grades, your results on the board. You can determine the politics situation of things in your office. You can speak and evacuate some demons from your territory. In fact, if there are demons in the territory, it's because there are either no anointed people or the anointed people who don't know they are anointed. Because the Bible says the yoke shall be destroyed and demons walk around with yokes. But today, every yoke around your life is going down. In the name of Jesus. I said every yoke around your life is going down. In the name of Jesus. Now, try and carry that handkerchief and go to your seat. Just try, carry it with your hand and walk to your seat. Because everything that leaves the anointed is anointed. You go to a place, they gave you water, you drank the water, remained small and left it there. You left an anointing there. If a witch drinks that water, they are in trouble. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? Watch the way. <laughs> Watch the way she's walking. You drink, you drink that bottle and left it there. You went for training. You drank some of the water and left it there. And then someone who has not had a child for five years came with another organization the next day using the same hall for training. And they took your water, whatever enters her head and she drinks it. Barrenness is over. Because the gifts and callings of God are without repentance. Let now it's light that sponsors this. I hope you know. That's why we taught the two of them together. Please collect my hanky from her. Collect it, Ken. Give it to me, please. Can I pray for you now? Okay. You go sit down. You want me to pray for you? Eh? You want me to pray for you? Okay, hold your hands together. Now, Father, such as I have released to them a tangible weight of your presence, just the way I sense it in my room when I pray, let it come upon them right now.
lift your hands father in the name of jesus i stand by the authority of the anointing as a son of the of the kingdom and by the privilege of the apostolic and the prophetic grace and i declare that every embargo over the lives of your children is lifted today i said it is lifted today i don't care how long it has been i don't care if it is transgenerational but today that embargo is lifted from your life let the light of the word of god that brings illumination wisdom knowledge and understanding let it rest upon your hearts from today i decree and declare from today you walk in light you walk in light the light that is needed to break off every situation around your life that has robbed you of your god ordained dominion receive it right now i said receive it right now i see the spirit of revelation coming on two people on this row that row this row here this row to my left the spirit of revelation is coming on two people like light i decree and declare again the light that is needed to bring you out of your current situation in life receive it now receive it now receive it now just help them there in the name of jesus from today know that you are anointed walk in the consciousness of the anointing that is in your life let that anointing make you a sign and a wonder let that anointing make your enemies run from you make you a terror to the adversary let that anointing make you skillful in a supernatural way from today nothing will be mysterious around you some of you after today you will mysteriously know the password of people's phones now listen <laughs> listen don't use it to steal oh. i'm just saying that from today the anointing resting upon your life there will be no mystery around you Amen. those of you that are skilled photographers bakers caterers whatever whatever skill the anointing that will make you break the limit in your profession receive it now Amen. you will do things you never learned in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus the anointing for excellence there's such a thing as excellence they could not found anything with Daniel except with his God may that grace rest upon you now go and be a champion go and rule over the things that have scared you rule over the things that have militated against you rule over your adversaries i declare to you rise above and stay above rise above and stay above rise above and stay above in the name of jesus shout that amen three times number one two three Wave your hands and give the Lord praise. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided. Just keep standing everywhere. I'm about to make the altar call. I'm about to make the altar call now. Back. No turning back. While we all stand very quickly, please, no time to waste. If you are here, you want to give your heart to the Lord so that you can receive light from His Word, so that you can receive the anointing. You can be a partaker of these things that we have shared and experienced. But you want to give your heart to the Lord, or you want a restoration in your relationship with the Lord. 
you don't know where you are now with the Lord you used to be born again but a lot of things have happened and you want to be rededicated back to God wherever you are I want you to walk to the front very quickly you have to be you have to be bold you don't have to be ashamed about it I want you to come to the front surrender to the Lord and everything tonight will be a part and parcel of your life as we sing this song two more times, I want you to make your way to the front and I want you to celebrate them as they come. I have decided to follow You want to surrender to the Lord Jesus? Don't be ashamed. So that you can receive the anointing. So that you can be a partaker of light. So that all that you have heard can be a part of your life. Please clap for them as they make their way to the front. No turning back. No turning Keep clapping. They are coming. I know God is talking to people right now. No if God is speaking to you or pricking your conscience, forget about who is standing by you and make your way to the front. It's time to be reconciled with Jesus. It's time to be reconciled with Jesus. It's time to return back to Him. Come on, keep clapping. They are coming. I have decided. No turning back, no turning back, no turning back. Sing one more time. Let's sing it together. Faith to follow. I have decided. Would you stretch your hands towards them and pray for them? Once upon a time in your life you did this that they are doing. Can you stretch your hands towards them? Those of you that are listening online and the Spirit of God has convicted you, you want to surrender your heart to the Lord from wherever you are listening from, whichever nation you are following from or state. I want you to repeat the prayers that I will lead these ones to make in a moment of time. Those of you in front, I congratulate you. With your right hand on your chest, I want you to say these words after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I surrender my heart to you. I believe that you died and rose again to save me. I accept you as my Savior and my Lord. Thank you for saving me in Jesus' name. Now, Father, keep your right hand on your chest. Behold this one standing before your people. Unashamedly, they came out to surrender to you. I declare by the authority of your word that their sins are forgiven. I decree and declare from today that they are born again. And they have been inducted into the family of God. I ask that you seal them with your Holy Spirit. And let what they have heard tonight become a part of their lives. In the name of Jesus Christ. They will grow to serve you every day. Your joy will never depart from them. In Jesus' mighty name. Church, 